Hi guys, my name's Shai and I'm a fellow at the Wild Center and today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to create your own watercolor painting of wildflowers. Okay, I'm going to start things off with what you guys need. First, some good quality paper. This is just my sketchbook. You can use whatever you have. If it's watercolor paper, cardstock, um, it could be any shape or size as well. Maybe you want to do a bookmark or a postcard. Um, and then you're going to need a pencil to draw out your flowers. You're going to need an eraser in case you make any mistakes. I always do. And then you're going to need some watercolors. I'm using watercolors today, but you can use whatever you have available. Uh, if that's colored pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you have, it'll work. Um, and since I'm using watercolors, I have a thin tipped paintbrush. I'm using a thin tipped paintbrush because I am not going to be doing any large washes. It's going to be mostly fine detail, so I don't really need any other size. And I also need some water and a napkin to dab my brush off. And then once my drawing is all finished, I'm going to use this thin tipped micron, thin tipped micron pen. Um, you can use whatever thin tipped pen you have, maybe a Sharpie, a ballpoint pen, whatever you have would probably work. Or if you want, you can always use your thin brush to outline a lot of your um, flowers with black paint at the end if you would prefer. Before we get to watercoloring, we need to lightly outline our flowers. Most of the flowers I'm going to be drawing today are pretty simple shapes, except for this first flower, a wild lupine. They have a very distinctive mitten shape to their petals, and they're all arranged around the stem. So as you draw the petals, you should start with the frontmost petal and move backwards around the stem. To help you achieve the right perspective for each petal, hold out your hand in front of you with your fingers straight like you're wearing a mitten, and then turn your hand in the angle that the petal would face. This will give you a general shape of what each petal should have. The leaves of a wild lupine are in a palm shape with 10 leaves. Now while I'm following the way that this plant grows in nature, very strictly, you can base your drawings on real plants or even invent your own. The thing about wildflowers is that they don't have to be perfect. Sometimes a wobbly line looks more natural than a straight one. For most flowers, I like to start with the centers and then work outwards. This also gives you a guide for the perspective of the flowers. If you're going for a more natural style to your painting, alternate the angles that the flowers are sitting. Some can face you, others can face upwards or sideways. To help you imagine how your flower might look from the side, get something really flat and round, like a plate, and then hold it at different angles to see how the outline of that shape changes. So when it's being held at a side, it might be more of an oval, while if it's straight in front of you, it'll be a perfect circle. The arrangement of the flowers don't have to be the same as mine. Get creative and arrange your flowers in a way that you like. Now that the flowers are finished, we can move on to the pollinators. Some bumblebees and a butterfly. Your bee's head should be an egg shape with a point at the end. The middle part, or thorax, should be round. This is also where the legs and the wings attach, so don't forget to add those. The abdomen is also round, but it is a little bit oblong. And don't forget to add some eyes and some antenna. For your butterfly, the head should be round, the thorax should be ovular, and the abdomen should be a long oval. The butterfly will also have a curling proboscis at the end of their face. Finally, I'm just going to add one more B over here because I like the balance of the number three. Erase any stray marks or overlapping lines. Now we can start painting. So I like to use lighter colors to begin with and then layer by layer start adding dark colors. Be pretty sparing with the saturation of the color at first because you can always add more but it's pretty difficult to take it away. I like to paint all of my flowers first before I do my leaves and stems because usually they're not overlapping a lot of things and then my leaves and stems are going to be all green anyway and so it's easy to adjust between greens. Now to add some extra depth and fullness, I'm going to add some grasses in the background with light green. If it's easier, you can draw them beforehand, but sometimes pencil can darken and muddy watercolor, so I prefer to freehand them. And now that the base color of paint is done, 
we can start intensifying some of the colors that we use to add a little dimension to the flowers and leaves. And when you're painting your bees, make sure to let the yellow dry before you add the black stripe so the colors don't bleed into each other. With our painting finished, we can now pull out some details by outlining the drawing with a thin black pen. You can add some veins to the leaves and define details in the flowers. With the pen, you can make your insects really pop. So with short, curved marks, you can outline the bodies to give a furry appearance. I haven't outlined some of the grasses in the background because I wanted to give my painting a more layered appearance. And now my painting is complete. I hope this tutorial inspired you guys to make your own springtime wildflower creations. Don't forget to share your artwork by tagging us or using the hashtag TheWildCenter. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.